Wonder Creates and today I'm going to be making a horror background and at the very beginning of this video I didn't know 100% what I was doing because I wanted to test out Mod Podge because I never tried Mod Podge before so I decided to make a background to test it out and it didn't turn out as bland and as boring as I thought it would because I didn't really plan much of it out so but it turned out better than I thought so that's good so um yeah I hope you enjoy this video on how to make a horror background yay okay so basically I have like a lot of cardboard <laughs> and I really want to like try and like paint some like backgrounds and florins and stuff and I want to really test out this mod podge like look at that I've never like used mod podge before so I really want to like test that out as well so I'm just gonna like make simple plain backgrounds which is kind of boring but i do want to make like a horror background so I'm, I'm pretty excited for that but still not gonna i don't think it's gonna be like very detailed but yeah I've, i kind of like labeled it as well look at that oh so yeah that's basically what i'm going to be doing today in this video and i think it is kind of boring so i'm like sorry but like i'm really excited and i want to like see what like yeah i just i want to video it and I'm, I'm okay i just this is for my own like personal like I don't know. <laughs> I just want to make a video on it, even though I think it's going to be boring, but I, I want to make a video on it for me, okay? Okay! So yeah, that's what I'm going to be doing. Okay, so I'm actually kind of like scared. Like, I don't know if, I, if I'm going to like use this first. Apparently you can use this before like applying paint and stuff. And yeah, I, I'm not sure. I never used Mod Podge before. <gasps> Look at that. Ooh. Right, okay, so Mod Podge basically looks like normal glue. Um, hmm. Hmm, have I been scammed? Like, I could have just bought, got normal glue, but I don't know. So I'm gonna, like, coat this cardboard with, like, Mod Podge. Like, oh my god, this is scary. Oh my god. If I, like, pour some... Oh! <laughs> like, look at this. Oh my god. Ah, it's like, um... Is this what, like, they do to wallpaper before they, like, stick it on the wall? Like, just do this. Like, it's, it's actually pretty, like, therapeutic. So, yeah, I'm gonna try and, like, spread as much glue around as I possibly can. And I got some on my thumb. Damn it! <laughs> but, yeah, that's basically what I'm gonna be doing. So, yeah. I don't know if I, like, put too much on. I don't... I, no, I haven't. Okay, I'm trying to think positive. Everyone's probably thinking, wow, that's such, like, a massive waste of Mod Podge. But guess what? It's okay. Be well, it's not, but... <laughs> I'm learning okay so stop bullying us and if it is too much I can just put some on like the other bits of cardboard so it, it's not it's not even a loss so so yeah okay so I finished painting this with like Mod Podge so yeah I'm gonna like do the other bits of cardboard now so <laughs> yeah that's what I'm gonna do and then I'm gonna like try and paint over it when it's like dry maybe yeah <laughs> Maybe that's what I should do. I don't know if I should like paint on it straight away while it's like wet. So I think I might just wait for it to dry. I don't know how long it's gonna be. I'm guessing it might take some hours, but in the meantime, I'm gonna paint the other bits of cardboard and we'll see. Okay, so I painted four pieces of cardboard with the Mod Podge and they're all dry except that one. This one here, it was like curling like around. So what I did, right? What I had to do, I got the hair dryer and I was hair drying it and I put like this stand on it to flatten it and I want to see if it's like worked. So <gasps> it's worked, yes. So now I can start painting on top of them. So yeah. <laughs> okay, so now it's time to paint over this. I'm just going to use white paint and um, because I actually just want a white background. So <clears throat> that's what I'm gonna do and there's like no paint, great, okay. <laughs> but yeah, I do wanna have like a white background and I am gonna paint some like red splodges on it. So it's gonna look like blood and stuff, so yeah. <laughs> Cause I am making like a horror background, so yeah. I'm actually not sure like how many layers I should do of white paint. Maybe I just need one layer and see what happens or what it looks like after that, but We'll see. We will see. It's not gonna be like a really, really exciting background or anything, but like, it's okay. Cause sometimes, right, in life, less is more. 
yeah i think i am gonna paint like another coat on here just to get some more coverage and stuff so yeah so i ended up painting about four or five white layers of paint and now i can start sketching in all of the detail but first i'm gonna show you all of the materials that i will be using so yeet so I've got some black fine liners and a pencil and some cheeky little cotton buds there. Hello! <laughs> oh yeah, and I have like used some of these cotton buds for other projects, so <laughs> that is not wax. And I've got an eraser in case I do any little mistakes. And I finally found some like tiny little brushes that I found like ages ago. And I found them like in a pound shop and they're actually like nail brushes. So yeah, and I got them for like one pound and like this, these will be so good for like making customs because they're so tiny. I haven't used these before so I might use them, I might not use them but I'm not sure but like I'm just happy I got tiny little brushes like oh tiny little brushes, yay! So now let's begin. Okay so I'm like drawing like these little markings to show like how many days have gone by of of pain and endless suffering I, I don't know but i just thought like oh it's kind of like creepy and and horror horror <laughs> and stuff so yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna like draw loads of them <laughs> and then like after i draw something i'm gonna like smudge it with a cotton bud because i want it to get like an old rusted like smudgy effect and i just think it looks good <laughs> So I'm going to draw out like the devil's number 666 and, and oh I've drew that way too swirly so I'll go back and fix that but yeah I'm going to draw like 666s six, six, and other things like that I'm going to fix up this 6 now because that was way too swirly like that devil has some fashion okay <laughs> that's why it was swirly I've kind of toned it down a bit and stuff I'm going to underline it as well I'm gonna draw like some X's cause X's is like negative, right? <laughs> I found it kind of hard to like, what do I draw on like a blank horror background sort of wall? I did find it quite challenging cause I didn't really know what to draw and I'm a person who loves like loads of detail and everything. I did have some ideas going into this like I knew I was gonna like draw markings on the wall and I knew I was gonna do the 666 and the X's and I'm drawing like some cracks on the wall as well and then I was like oh I should like do some writing so I written go away because it's like isolation and I want to be alone leave me alone I hate the world sort of thing <laughs> And I am drawing everything out in pencil first so I can smudge it and just in case I do a mistake then I will go over it with a black fine liner. Oh and another pre-idea that I had before I started this project was like to do stitches because I just I just like stitches I just I have a thing for stitches oh my god <laughs> I don't know I just like drawing like stitches on things, it gives us like a voodoo sort of vibe, <laughs> so. I would say like the very core of my art is heavily inspired by the poem Voodoo Girl, which is a poem by Tim Burton. So that's why I like to draw stitches and pins, I like to give something like a voodoo sort of edge to things. <laughs> like My Little Pony or Say, okay, it has pins in the cutie mark, okay. <laughs> I was gonna put like stitches in it but like I couldn't really fit stitches in it like it has writing inside it but yeah it doesn't have stitches on my cutie mark maybe I should add stitches I would if it could fit <laughs> anyway so I'm drawing like this massive crack in the wall and um <laughs> I'm not really good <laughs> at drawing cracks <laughs> yeah like I find it like hard to draw like a good crack you know what I mean <laughs> I decided to draw like a stitched border that goes on the sides of the wall as well. And I drew the stitching in like different sizes and angles and I've done some X's and stuff. Yeah and I drew like this little pattern in the corner of the wall as well. I think I am going to draw more but like I have to like go over these with like a black fine liner so I'm just going to like go in with a black fine liner because I just I can't be bothered so <laughs> wow <laughs> what an excuse but yeah I'm just going to try and smudge everything the best I can before I go in with a black fine liner 
using a cotton bud or a q-tip whatever you want to call it to smudge it or you can use your finger to smudge it but I'm being fancy and using a cotton bud <laughs> so I go the same way as the lines are in the writing and all of the other little pictures that I've drawn and I do go in this like circular motion as well to try and smudge it more to try and get that rusted old shadowy effect so after I've drawn everything using a pencil and smudged it over with a cotton bud, I'm now going to go over my writing and all my pictures and imagery using a black fine liner. I'm going in with the black fine liner now to make the writing and all the other things that I've drawn pop out more. And it did become more difficult because um, the surface of the paint is like really rough. And I think it was like essentially like destroying the point of like the fine liner. <laughs> but I kept with it because I really like the inky heavy effect that the fine liner gives. But then um, my fine liner got destroyed as you can see right here that it's not working anymore. So I had no choice but to use like a regular pen but this pen had a really sharp point to it. And I give like pretty much the same sort of effect so... I've destroyed a fine liner for like no reason. I could have just like used this pen because it's a good pen. Uh, <laughs> it has a very sharp point and it pretty much gives the same effect. So a sharp pointed pen is just as good as a fine liner. So yee! I'm trying to get like this sort of scratchy sort of effect with all of my pictures that I've drawn. Cause I just really like how it looks <laughs> and I'm gonna do the same effect with the writing as well. And I do go back to be certain of how I want everything to look to make sure that it's really scratchy and inky and stuff. <laughs> Yeah, I drew like a little hangman as well and some other um, <laughs> intense messages <laughs> and I just went over them with my pen as well. I did do some things a lot less scratchy like the markings on the wall so you can see them a lot easier. And I didn't want the cracks to be scratchy at all because it's a cra- oh my god I just realised what I said. <laughs> It sounds so bad, okay. But yeah, I didn't want like the cracks to be scratchy at all. Shut up, okay. I didn't want <laughs> I didn't want the cracks to be scratchy because um it yeah, it's a crack in the wall. Get your heads out the good air people. <laughs> but yeah, I did do everything else like the numbers, the writing, the stitches, the X's, the other imagery with like the scratchy sort of style effect <laughs> mm. right so here we go so <laughs> with the bigger cracks um i try to color them in with a pen <laughs> um okay <laughs> but i think i might go over them with like black paint just to save us from colouring in a large um, area with a tiny pen. So yeah. Mm. 
So after I went over all of my penciled in drawings and my writing etc with a short pointed black pen, it looked like this. So now, let's get on with the painting. Right, okay, so if you noticed or not, I drew like these little squiggly things and like circular sort of shapes. Um, so I done that so I know where to put like the puddles of blood. <laughs> but yeah, that's what they're there for. <laughs> oh yeah, and I drew more of this pattern. Like I just went in freehand with a pen, so I didn't like go over pencil. I just like done it straight away with a pen, the rest of it. So yeah. <laughs> Okay, so first I want to test out this really cheap paint that I got. I want to see how good it is and it doesn't look too good. <laughs> um, but like, I'm still going to test it out because I, I do want to see like how good it it can might be. It might be good and I'm just going to get some... doesn't matter if the black paint's cheap because you know it's black paint. So I'm going to first test it out in my little bed puddle here. <laughs> And it doesn't really look like blood, I don't think. I mean, this is just the first layer, so I mean, you know. <laughs> I mean, it's something to build up on, so. <laughs> I am gonna go back to that small dead puddle, <laughs> but I need to like let it to dry so I can go back to it and build up on it with more layers of paint. While I'm waiting, I'm just gonna go ahead and paint all the other puddles with this very cheap paint. I think it looks more like tomato ketchup than blood, but yeah, I mean it's only the first layer and it is cheap paint, so... I think I'll just use this as like a base colour and I'll go over it with a different type of paint, which is hopefully better than this paint, because this paint is like, it's really watery and it, it looks horrible, <laughs> so yeah. And this is my last blood puddle. Yeah, it's it's my angel one. <laughs> so I want to test out these paints too. Now I got like these paints specifically for pony customs, but I want to see how like good they are because I haven't like used them before. I'm just using the excess paint from the paper lid <laughs> to help me paint this puddle. Yeah, I think these paints are better because they're not as watery and the colour looks more solid. So I'm painting the middle of the puddle with black paint just to make it look a bit more gruesome. <laughs> For the smaller details, I'm going to use these nail brushes. And hopefully, they will work wonders. So I'm going to start by painting in these claw marks. Using my fancy little nail brush. How lovely. <laughs> and I do want the red paint to be a bit bigger than the line that I actually drew for the claw marks. So for the writing, I do actually want the paint to be a lot bigger and I want it to look more like sloppy and stuff. So it looks like the blood is like smeared. So I am purposely smearing it like longer than the black lines that I drew and I will be going over this again with like black paint or a black pen. So because I want like black to be in the middle of the red of the red paint because I think it will look pretty pretty nice and gory
for the stitch marking i'm gonna just go in a circular motion with the red paint and it kind of mixes in with the black ink and it kind of gives it more of like a bit of an edge to it and it just it, it looks like a really good effect and I, I really like it like look at that it's so like messy and ah <laughs> very gory for like the single words i'm just gonna smear red paint over it And I'm just gonna cross this out and oh I did mess up there but it's okay it's fine it, it's meant to be blood it's meant to be messy so yeah so I kind of like thickened it a bit to try and like cover it up <laughs> and that'll be enough for that <laughs> so for my dead word I decided to do like the circular thing again and look at it it's like mixing in with like the ink and it oh it just it looks so like horror and gory and it just it, look at that it's like a purpley reddy black and it just looks horrible and that's and it's, it's great <laughs> and this is another little mini puddle that i forgot to paint so i'm just doing that now I'm just following the lines on this stitch mark but I'm making it really smeary and it looks so good yay now I'm gonna go in with this acrylic paint so I can have different shades and textures in the blood puddles so I'm gonna start by framing round the black splodge and I'm gonna work my way out from it so this gives it like more of a colour variation and it gives it like such a nice contrast between the colours and it makes it look a bit more realistic as well like using more of like a dabbing technique with the brush to give it more textures and it just look look at that <laughs> I just think it looks more like it looks like a cut open wound really that more than a blood puddle but you know what it's all right because <laughs> I, I just I love I love it like it, it looks good <laughs> it looks really gory and stuff and it just looks more realistic so i'm kind of like spreading the color outward from the black splodge <laughs> and i'm using a dabbing technique with my brush to give it texture and for the puddles that are supposedly meant to be against the wall i'm starting from like where like the like the corner of the wall is and i'm kind of like going from there basically using the same dabbing technique now i'm gonna go in with two other shades of acrylic paint so i can have more of a color variation so i'm starting from where i left off and i'm using a different shade of red paint because we're going from a darker paint to a lighter paint and i'm just painting as normally so i'm not using any dabbing techniques or anything I'm just going over the really bad cheap red paint that I used at the very beginning because I hate it so much so yeah <laughs> unfortunately my favorite acrylic paint kind of tore open so this is going to be the last ever time using it before it dries up and it's oh that, that's sad <laughs> so this is the lightest red paint that I'm using and I'm just like putting it like around the edges a bit just to, so it can have a bit of a blend and stuff and I'm using that same red paint on the bigger puddle as well just to highlight some areas I used the side of the brush to get this grisly sort of effect I'm using this technique over the arrows that I've drawn and the numbers and some blocks of text Now I'm painting the corners and the edges of this hopscotch pattern that I've drawn and I'm just smearing it a bit because it's meant to be blood and it's not meant to look like too neat it's meant to be a bit messy because it's meant to like be all over the place so yeah I'm just like smearing it around the edges So I painted in this line so it looks like something's been like dragged and and then they died <laughs> and I'm just covering the number 10 in red paint completely <laughs> 
And to finish it off, I'm doing the swirly whirly technique on the hopscotch pattern that I drew. Just to make it more messy and dramatic and gory. And it gives it a gritty sort of looking texture. Now, this is what I've been waiting for. So now I'm gonna like splash paint everywhere and make a mess. So it's like blood splatters everywhere. I did experiment with different sort of brushes to see which one give like the best sort of blood splatter. <laughs> In the end I went with this biggish sort of paintbrush because it created a big splatter and it went all over my wall. <laughs> ah! So I tried to get it off the wall and I just like, I smeared it and, <laughs> and I made it worse. So um, I'm just going to continue what I'm doing and then I'm going to go and like worry about that later. <laughs> Eek. So I tried to do like another splatter but I accidentally made this big plodge of paint. I just spread it out a bit. And I just left it and yeah. <laughs> so to make the paint splatter what I do, I get some paint and I mix it in with some water. And I do put more paint in than water and then I just mix it. Then I get the paint brush and I pull back the bristles with my fingers and then I just like slingshot the paint on <laughs> to get the splatter effect. So yeah, I just do that all over then you get a mess. <laughs> So this did kind of like destroy my paintbrush so if you're gonna do something like this just keep that in mind that you could like really destroy your paintbrush. So yeah, pick one to sacrifice. <laughs> then you can splat a paint everywhere and make it look like someone's been brutally murdered. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> I did do this dabbing thing to get some thicker paint drops everywhere. Oh, and I did find a tub of paint in the shed and I did hide all of the evidence on the bedroom wall. <laughs> You'll never notice a thing. <laughs> ah, perfect. <laughs> so after I splattered paint everywhere and hid the evidence on the bedroom wall, <laughs> it now looks like this. So I do think I went a little bit overboard on the wall part and I did finish the rest of this outside so no more paint can get on the wall. <laughs> but yeah, I think I did splatter too much paint on the wall piece but this is what it turned out to look like so yeah. Now I'm going to go back in with this sharp pointed black pen to refresh some of the details and yes, my other one did run out but this one is the same make so yeah and it's got a squishy head too. <laughs> And I got some paint splattered on it as well. <laughs> Using the black pen, I'm going to go all over the writing that I did and the other markings and images as well. I think the paint covered the writing and the imagery a bit too much, so I want them to stand out again. The pen did take away some of the surface and it did give it like some white tears, so I had to make sure to like fill them in so you can't see the tears. <laughs> I did use some black paint to fill in the bigger cracks so the colour can look a bit more bold. And I can go over any little white specks that I missed with the pen. And I did decide to go over this large bit of text just to see what it looks like and I'm not sure like if I like it or not but I, th I think it's okay but I just did this to see like what it looks like okay? <laughs> I'm not sure if I like it though but yeah. <laughs> so now this is what everything looks like. Now we're finally at the final step, which is apply Mod Podge. 
So now, oh god, <laughs> I'm gonna cover the whole thing with Mod Podge and I hope this doesn't like ruin anything because like if it does then like I've like destroyed everything and this will be like a complete waste of time. If this does get destroyed, just like skip this step. Oh no, I feel like this is gonna turn out bad. I look at it, it's like, uh, I think I think it will turn out okay because like it, when it dries up, right, it might not look that bad. It might not have like this white sort of glaze over it, but I, I think it's gonna look fine. It's gonna look fine. Okay, so I just finished putting Mod Podge on them both now and this one seems to be curling up a bit. Ooh. So when this one dries, I'm gonna put something heavy on it so it will be fine. So now I just need to wait for them both to dry. So now the Mod Podge has dried, so now I'm gonna put like something heavy on this one. And hopefully, hopefully, if I just like leave it like that, it it should be good. <laughs> I might get the hairdryer to try and like make it stay like that. I don't know if, if the hairdryer actually like does anything, but yeah. <laughs> That's well, that's what I'm gonna do. So he... so now everything is fully dry and everything, and this still didn't flatten. So what I've done, I've blue tacked it to the wall. <laughs> so I blue tacked it so it will be flat, and I'm hoping that it will stay flat because I think if you make things stay in a position for a long period of time, that it like usually stays like that permanently. So that's what I'm hoping for. So yeah. <laughs> So this is what the final result looks like. Yes, I've finally finished it and I'm really happy of how it turned out and everything, so yeah. <laughs> so now I'm gonna try and explain this a bit more. So basically this turned out to be like a horror asylum. And some of the messages that I wrote is meant to show paranoia and isolation and wanting to be alone. And I made it look like someone has betrayed this character and they are clearly really upset about it. The feel forgotten and possibly used. And it kind of spiralled them out of control, full of anger and hatred. And they're in this endless place of pain, which they don't feel safe. The cracks on the stitches can represent their mind a bit. Being broken and unfixable and you know some things, you can patch them up a bit but the pain is still there and they are scared. So there's some meaning and deep stuff for you. <laughs> but I could use this background for horror art projects and I can use it for like photography and, and I can use it for like other videos and, and, and yeah. <laughs> so thank you all so much for watching and bye!